So we've got the kind of the, the bare bones of the, the mix in, the intro there. It's time to get into the, the main sample that we, we remade earlier on in Reason. So for that, we basically, do you want to just whack it on? We just sort yeah. of um, just looped the first few bars of that guitar and, and, um, and then got into the main, the main sort of riff. Into, into the main part, um, which you've all you've heard before, uh, and then it's just a matter of getting together a, a kind of filthy little electro bass sound and um, uh, and getting out of the guitars into the uh, into the kind of electronic part of the track again. So, so what we've done is we've basically put the whole track in as Andy said there, uh, the track the mix down off a reason. Uh, you now need to transition between the rock elements that are in there and dance track, or it'll sound uh, sound a little bit too weird. So we used a small part of the vocal just to kick it out of the track, um, which sounds a little bit like this. Generic bass sound for electro stuff, but it's quite uh, on a, um, a commercially tip for what the, what dance is uh, hitting the charts and kind of market like that, which is what we were aiming to do with the track. Yeah, I just really quickly wanted to um, touch on something that we do to to get inspiration for tracks. Now, say if we've got a remix uh, that's come through, or even if we're just working on some original stuff. Um, we've got a, maybe a decent little bass line in and um, some, you know, some decent sort of percussion and production but you're, you're looking for that next step and somewhere to go. Something that we've found really, really handy is um, I mean, if you use a Mac, um, using iTunes and mixed in key. I mean, mixed in key also um, you get for, for PC and whatever else. Um, but the way we organise it is so that if you use mixed in key, you whack, edit, whack all your tracks in there, so we've got full iTunes libraries of all the stuff we play in our DJ sets, but also random stuff, 80s, 90s, rock, classical, everything. Stick all that in mixed in key, and then it writes it into the comments field, so you can see here in our, our iTunes library, that there's just loads of different stuff, but in the comments field it's got all the keys. So, so you've been working on a track, like you say, you've got, you've got the bare bones of it down, Export that out, put it through um, mixed in key, and it'll give you a number, so from 1A to 12B, um, which corresponds to a different key. So once you know the, the key of the, your original track, you can then just type it into the top up here, uh, you know, go, so if I think it's in 6A, hit 6A, it'll give me everything that's in the same key as it. And then all I need to do is just hit play over the top of my own thing and you might just get little bits, you might get a tiny little loop, even if it's just a couple of seconds of notation that you think, oh that works, don't steal it, you don't need to sample it, it's then just replaying that with a totally different type of instrument, with, uh, you know, do it as a vocal, but it's just a really, really good way of getting inspiration and it, it like, just takes a couple of seconds and as long as you put everything that you've got as a kind of habit, every piece of music that we have goes straight through mixed in key, it then goes into iTunes and it's just there forever as a kind of reference point. Gives you lots of different chord progressions and things you wouldn't normally come up with. Um, and also be, yeah. vocal patterns as well. It can bring up quite interesting things because it might be that a random piece of classical music will go over some electro thing that you've done. You know that it's in the same key but you'd have never thought to put them together. So as long as you've got everything, all different styles, doesn't matter what it is really, just get it all keyed up, play it over the top of anything that you've got and it definitely gives you something gives you that little extra bit of inspiration. Okay, uh, one of the last things that we wanted to go through with you was uh, mastering, and there's a few different ways that we want to do this, so I'll quickly run through them all. The first one is the mastering that's within reason. Um, I mean, any track that you do, all you need to do is uh, go to create, and it's a um, the M plus mastering suite. So if you put that on at the end of a track, um, you'll then come up with a load of factory presets that come with it. The to be honest, the, the M-Class mastering in Reason, it's not amazing, so you're never going to get a particularly great finished product.
product that's ready to either go straight you know for CD manufacture or or for the club really I mean it really does need a bit of tweaking after that so we just put it on I uh, usually use the actual the factory setting that's acoustic but then just pull down a lot of the volumes I mean that's it's got everything on from a compressor a little bit of EQ um, a stereo widener and a, and a maximizer and just just pull it so that it's it's kind of clipping <laughs> soft clip on so it's taking it up to the limit but it's not harshly compressing or anything like that. We'll then export that out, um, save it off and, um, and then it's kind of time to run it through a bit of hardware or put it into uh, Logic and play about in there and we'll, we'll, we'll show you Logic first of all. Uh, like Andy was saying before about reasoning and mastering, there's, uh, there's a lot of different things in Logic that you can also use as a mastering tool. It's a little bit more in depth than Reason and uh, I find I can get quite a nice sound with it without using hardware and maybe just use the hardware a little bit later to uh, we give it a bit more beef and a bit more warmth. So once you're fairly happy with the track, there's a couple of things you can then do to it. Uh, I use a, a bundle called Sn a Snorkus bundle, which I find is really good for compressors and multiband limiting. But I also find the inbuilt uh, processors and uh, compressors in Logic really, really good as well. So yeah, so once you've got a, a track that you're fairly, fairly happy with, uh, you can see corner it's it's peaking and it's uh, it's not very good quality because you need to push all these sounds to get the loudest possible volume that you can get out of the track but without it clipping and sounding harsh. So the, one of the first things that I do is um, I use one of the Snorkers bundles which is a multi uh, multi limiter which has allowed me to limit stuff on each each individual frequency which keeps it down and keeps it from clipping so I just do this softly You can instantly see there that the levels aren't as pushed as they were before and they're not clicking. I then take a multipressor, which is one of the in inbuilt uh, compressors in uh, Logic. Uh, and then it's also got separate bands for different compression, so you don't compress your bass as much as you're pressing your high end. And compress them all at a different value, uh, adjusting attack and, attack and release as to what, how I feel necessary, how I. Uh, think it should be sounding. So that pushes up all the volume so as the track uh, moves through the breakdowns it'll bring the volume to the breakdowns up uh, or obviously in the different frequencies uh, to make it sound a little bit more complete and it is less party. So that pushes that up. Then even though it's the, the last thing on the bundle I open up a level meter a little bit further down um, which allows me once I've turned it on to peak uh, an RMS uh, it allows me to see what what noise I'm using from the channels and what stuff is actually o getting o overused and what I could do with being pushed. It gives you uh, two different coloured uh, bands. The first, the peaks, shows you where it's actually peaking at and the bottom one is how loud it actually is. So it shows you how much you can use to limit. So alongside running an adaptive limiter, which is over here, I could then push the gain up and down to control how much I'm pushing the track to really give it that volume without the track actually clipping. So I'll turn the, turn the gain down on the adaptive limiter. And you can see the two different bands that are there and by changing the gain it pushes the volume of the track. Giving a far fuller sound and stopping clips. But at this point you can push it far too far and completely destroy a track so you've got to be really really careful with not overdoing it. Can make it sound absolutely far too much with too much gain on there. That's basically the, a, a very brief brief mastering as far as the logic is concerned. So that's the that's the, um, the software side of things. Um, just two more things of mastering that we're going to show you because there is so many different ways and everyone masters in totally different ways. I mean also in this studio we well, we often do mastering for other people and one of the things that we use uh, is this little unit down here so we'll show you this next. 